You might remember in my last video, video number 52, I took a quick look at this from a usage point of view and experimented a little bit with doing a small soldering job. So in this video, it's just gonna be a quick teardown of this unit to check out basically build quality, determine whether or not there's any uh, manufacturing differences or variances across uh, anyone else that may have torn this unit down. But on the outset, it is of good build quality. Let's check it out on the inside. First, you might see the control panel interface at the front here. There is a little clip underneath the face. Probably can't see it in the video. Oh yeah, you might be able to, just there. You can actually pinch that up towards the top and you can actually remove the whole control module. Taking a look at the control module, we can see a few PCBs. So this allows probably quick and easy uh, servicing. If this was in an industrial application, you may want to get easy access to this, swap it out with a new unit instead of getting into the back of the machine, normally a big enclosure, and uh, ferreting away inside to get to the unit. So this is a great uh, maintenance and uh, repair idea, allowing you to switch out the brains of the unit with a fresh one or take this one out for repair. And the entry is just exactly the reverse of putting the, pulling the unit out. It does have wiping terminals at the back. You can see it is a card edge type connector on both cards, only to one side. There's nothing on the inside edges at all. But that is a pretty handy tip. A very good functionality from repairing the unit or at least testing it. Underneath we see four rubber feet. They also hold the base plate on, which gets us into the main compartment. And then inside that, there should be uh, some more fixturing holding on the top heater plate. So we'll just quickly undo those four screws. And there we can see the wiring, very tidy indeed. We do have heat rated insulation on most of the wires, especially the ones that traverse to the upper plate there. We can see the back of the IEC connector and we can see well grounded earth cables on both the chassis and the plug, crimped and screwed. But what we can also see is there's no obvious uh, paint removal around those earth connections. So let's just pop one of those off and see what the extent of the earth connector is all about. Oh, it is pretty tight, which is great. And we can actually see under there, it is a punch through type uh, screw, machine screw hole there, but the paint is completely intact. So that's probably not great to make 100% uh, electrical connection between the two. So you will be relying on the connection of the screw itself to the threads of the hole. What we will do is screw that back on, check to see if we've got full continuity with the least amount of resistance possible to the earth pin on the IEC connector. So we have the multimeter in continuity mode at the moment. We'll take our probes. One probe on the earth connector or earth pin. Well, we have continuity to the screw itself, but do we have continuity to the painted metal box? So over here we have another screw, which is one of the fasteners for the top hot plate. So we see if we've got continuity there. And we do. And we can see if we just touch the painted surface, we don't get continuity unless we really dig in. We really got a scratch of that paintwork. So that just highlights the importance. If you want a dedicated earth connection or a good electrical connection, you should always remove the paint down to bare metal for your ring connectors to make that electrical connection to the surface. Otherwise you do run the risk of having a layer of insulation between the earth connector and the metal chassis. And then you're, you are not necessarily guaranteed the uh, protection that having an earth connected chassis affords. So just with that, we'll quickly switch over to resistance mode. Here we are. Back onto our pin again on the earth. Onto the screw. Well, he's climbing a bit, but we've got less than 0 0.10 of, 0.1 of an ohm there, which is great. What about the screw over here? Yeah, same sort of figure. Obviously we're gonna have no connection against the painted surface unless we really drive the probe into the paintwork. We're we just doing that now. There we go. 
And again, we've got a good connection there, but only after we really drive into that paint. And because this is powder coated, it's a fairly durable surface. It's not just a typical rattle can coat. It's, um, it's a very durable and insulative surface. So we can't always rely on just simply screw, screwing a machine screw in uh, into a thread that we will gain a good electrical connection. All in all, the wiring itself is well terminated and we do have a silicone braided surface on all the insulation here. So that's good, high quality cable there. We'll just a quick look at the back of the terminals here. And they're all crimped and terminated. And you can see that in there. Seems to be uh, good quality connections. This minor wire on the other side is purely for the thermistor or the temperature sensor going off to the heated bed. So there's good separation, low signal, and all your hot main connectors on the other side. It's a bit of a win there. Okay, we'll take the four main screws that we can see in each corner here and separate the top heat plate. And we can just see through those gaps, there's a couple of standoffs there and the same on the other side. So that gives us a bit of thermal separation of the hot plate to the main body. So we can see the hot plate is now separated from the base unit here. We can see our wires going into the base plate and the other two signal wires for the thermistor or the temp gauge, temp sensor just here. Now there are a quite a few wires heading up to the hot plate. So what we'll do, we'll remove these standoffs and see if we can separate the plate out from the top unit and just see why there's so many wires in the top. There we are, those four points now removed. We'll slide this down here. And now we can see what's going on. It seems that we have a couple of different heaters here, but they are all coming from the same point. Interesting. And there is something screwing in just here and here on both sides sort of pinning those points to the hot plate. And we actually have more standoffs. So just tra tracing some of the wiring back, we do seem to have four separate heaters. And what seems to be happening is one side is wired in series. So we've got two heaters in series on both sides, but each side is in parallel. So we'll quickly just take a resistance reading across the heater wires on the back of the controller to see what sort of resistance we're dealing with. So if we're talking about 240 volts, which this unit runs on, and we're generating about uh, 1800, uh, sorry, 800 watts of heat. So we technically should see something around about 70 ohms. All right, that's one winding and this is the other end. What have we got there? 69.8 ohms, well there we go, so 69, so that's about 830 watts. Uh, if at uh, 240 volts, so that's fine. You can see the end profile of the aluminium plate here is an extrusion. So it's a high quality, fairly chunky piece of uh, aluminium there. Yeah, all connections are very well insulated very thick silicone um, and reinforced sleeves on the on the heating elements themselves and just turning our attention back to the IEC connector here we'll pull the fuse holder out and we'll just double check what value fuse that is and that appears to be a 5 amp 250 volt and the size of the fuse is 5 millimeter diameter by 20 millimeters long in case you need a spare Okay, so that's just about wrapped it up for the, uh, the build quality and the wiring. Uh, nothing really much to talk about. It's just a heating element with a computer controlled thermostat. Or oh, would I re recommend buying this unit? I would say yes. The price point is really good. The build quality is really good. And for what you get and what it can achieve for you, 
130 Australian dollars, about 90, 93, I think I said in my last video, 93 US dollars. Uh, well worth, a piece of kit that's well worth it. So uh, yeah, if you enjoyed the video, please uh, like and hit the subscribe button for other uh, teardowns and reviews that I do. But um, thanks for watching.